Okay, this is the first video on partial fractions. Um, I want you to look at the two problems on the screen and pause the video for a second and figure out which one would be easy to do based on what we have covered so far in this course. So pause it, try to work both of them, but only one of them should be straightforward based on what we've done so far. Okay, so the second integral, it turns out, is easy based on what we've done so far because we can split it like this. So we get 2 times the integral of 1 over x minus 3 plus the integral of 1 over x plus 6 dx. And both of those are quick u substitutions, but in each case du is 1 dx. So we can kind of skip the u substitution, or we can skip the u substitution, and just get this as the answer. The first problem is not as straightforward based on what we've done so far in the class. If you let u equal the denominator, that's probably the first thing to try. u would equal x squared plus 3x minus 18. du then would be 2x plus 3, which is unfortunately not easy to get from what's in the numerator. The way that we end up doing the first problem is we have to recognize that it's actually equal to the second problem. So 2 over x minus 3 plus 1 over x plus 6 is the same as the fraction that we started with. And so you can do it exactly the same way. We can factor the 2 out and split the fractions. And so we get exactly the same answer because they're really exactly the same integral. Now, the reason I knew that is because I made the problem up that way. But what we really want to know is why is this equal to that first step? And we can verify that that's the case by combining the fractions. So if I look at 2 over x minus 3 plus 1 over x plus 6, if I want to add those, I get a common denominator, which is x minus 3 times x plus 6. So I make two blank fractions with that in the denominator. To go from the first fraction to the new first fraction, we multiply by x plus 6. That gets us, We do that in the top and the bottom. That gets us 2x plus 12 in the numerator. To get the second fraction, we multiply the numerator and the denominator by x minus 3. When we combine those, then we get 3x plus 9 over, and you normally would leave that factored in the bottom, but if we multiply it out, we get x squared minus 3x minus, I'm sorry, x squared plus 3x minus 18, which then matches the problem that we had to begin with. And so in algebra class, you spend a good bit of time going in this direction. So if you have two relatively simple fractions, adding those or subtracting those, we get a common denominator and we learn in algebra how to do that. Sometimes in algebra you learn how to go the other way, sometimes you don't, it depends on your class. But what we would like to do is we would like to be able to go in reverse. And so the idea of partial fractions decomposition is not technically calculus, it's an algebra technique it's studied in calculus because it allows us to do a bunch of integrals that we wouldn't be able to do otherwise. And the idea is, how do you take a fraction like what we started with here and break it into simpler fractions like this, where we might be able to do the common, or we might be able to do the integral separately, which would be much easier than what we did to begin with. And so what we're going to do is we're going to do this process on several examples um, I'm going to use a new fraction, but we're going to do the same thing that we're doing here. We're going to try to figure out how do I do this first step. And once I do this first step, then we get integrals that we can do based on techniques we've done before in this course. Okay, so let's look at an example where we go the whole way through. So let's look at the integral of 5x minus 8 over x squared minus 2x minus 8. All right, so we're going to apply this partial fractions decomposition. And so the point of this video is to get this process down. And then we'll talk more about how to know when to do partial fractions and how to know, uh, or the different things that can happen with partial fractions decomposition. We'll talk more about that in later videos. Right now, we're just going to try to learn how to get this process down. And so what we do on this, once we determine 
to do partial fractions is we actually come over to the side somewhere. So I'm going to go to the bottom half of the screen. I'm going to factor the denominator of the fraction. So I'm going to rewrite the fraction without the integral. And I'm going to factor the denominator completely. So the denominator here factors to x minus 4, x plus 2. And the idea with partial fractions is that you want to break it down into all of the fractions that have denominators that could contribute to a common denominator of whatever this is, whatever this x minus 4, x plus 2, whatever the original denominator is. So you want all the fractions that have like smaller denominators, things that aren't the entire denominator, that could result in that as a common denominator. And so the denominators where that's possible are if the denominator is x plus 4, or if the denominator is x plus 2. The common denominator of both of those would obviously be x minus 4, x plus 2. Anything else would make the common denominator more complicated. Okay, so the idea is we want to now figure out what would go in the numerator that would result in a common or result in the fraction 5x minus 8 over x minus 4, x plus 2. In the numerator of the first fraction, we could have any constant, and we'll just call that a. In the numerator of the second fraction, we could have any other constant, and we'll call that b. Okay, the goal becomes to solve for a and b. And so we're going to do that by multiplying by the common denominator on both sides. So we're going to think of that as being x minus 4, x plus 2 over 1, and I'm going to multiply that expression on both sides of the fraction. When I do that, or both sides of the equation, when I do that, on the left-hand side, I get 5x minus 8. On the right-hand side, the x minus 4, x plus 2 distributes to both fractions. On the first fraction, the x minus 4s cancel. So we cancel the x minus 4 with the x minus 4 here, and so on the first one, we get a times x plus 2, on the second fraction, the x plus 2 cancels, and so I get b times x minus 4. Okay, so we're going to get rid of the purple there in case we look at this later. Um, but it, the x minus 4 cancels on the first one, the x plus 2 cancels on the second one. Now we're going to try to continue to solve for a and b. So I'm going to distribute the a. I'm going to distribute the b. And now we're going to combine like terms on the right-hand side. So the x's combine to become a plus bx. So we combine all the x terms. And then the constant terms, the terms without x, we put plus and then 2a minus 4b. So now we equate coefficients to try to solve for a and b. So the idea is the polynomial on the left is 5x minus 8. The polynomial on the right must also be 5x minus 8. The only way for that to be true is if we say, okay, a plus b has to equal 5, and 2a minus 4b has to equal negative 8. Now we have a system of equations where we're trying to solve for a and b. There are several ways to do this, but I'm going to choose to multiply the top equation by 4. So I get 4a plus 4b equals 20. The reason I would do that is because if I put the other fraction underneath it and add them, the b's cancel out. So I get 6a equals 12. That means a is 2, and now I can go back to the other equations to solve for b. So I know a plus b is 5, that means 2 plus b is 5, and then b is 3. That means the original integral can be rewritten as the integral of a over x minus 4, so 2 over x minus 4, plus b, so 3, over x plus 2, dx. All of the work at the bottom half of the screen is what we're doing in order to figure out this first step. Now we look at this integral as a brand new problem and we split this into two separate integrals.
we get 2 times the integral of 1 over x minus 4 dx plus 3 times the integral of 1 over x plus 2 dx. In this problem, both of those are quick u substitutions where du is 1 dx. So we get three, 2 natural log of absolute value of x minus 4 plus 3 natural log of x, the absolute value of x plus 2 plus c, and that's the answer. So on this problem, the actual calculus part is very straightforward. It's doing the partial fractions that's kind of some tedious algebra. Okay, let's look at another example. So on this problem, we're going to start the same way we did on the last problem. We're going to factor the denominator. Um, so I'm going to do that on the side. Uh, when we do that, there's a lot of ways you may have learned in high school or whenever you learn factoring um, to do this. Uh, one way to do it is to take the 4 times 6 and get 24, and you need to get two numbers that multiply to 24 and add to negative 25. Those are negative 24 and negative 1. And so you use those numbers to split up uh, the middle term there. You factor this by grouping, so you take a 4x out of the first two. You take a negative 1 out of the second two. And now the x minus 6 is the same. So you can factor that out and get x minus 6 times 4x minus 1. Um, if factoring is something that you need review on, you might want to let me know that, and uh, we can talk about that um, at another time. But uh, factoring, obviously, is going to be used a good bit during partial fractions problems. Um, so we try to break this down into the partial fractions decomposition, which means we're going to write this as the factor version. So 7x plus 4 over x minus 6 times 4x minus 1. And again, we break it down into the smaller fractions that could result in that having uh, the common denominator and that being the common denominator. And so here, the numerators are going to be constants. And so the goal is to figure out, okay, what would actually go over, let's make that a little neater, what would uh, go over x minus 6 and what would be over 4x minus 1 to make this equation true. So we multiply both sides of the equation by the common denominator, which is going to be x minus 6, 4x minus 1, and we think of that as being over 1. And remember, we're multiplying both sides by that. So when we do that on the left, the entire denominator cancels out, and we get 7x plus 4. When we do that on the right, the x minus 6 and 4x minus 1 distribute. On the first fraction, the x minus 6 cancels, so you get a times 4x minus 1. On the second fraction, 4x minus 1 cancels, so you get b times x minus 6. Now, again, the goal is to solve for a, so we're going to distribute the a. We're going to get 4ax uh, minus a, and we're also trying to solve for b. We're going to distribute that, so plus bx minus 6b, and that's equal to 7x plus 4. Uh, again, let's make it a little bit neater. We'll move the equal sign over a little bit. And now we're going to combine like terms. So you treat a and b as though they're constants. Um, so you uh, combine the x terms and get 4a plus b times x. And then combine the constants plus the quantity negative a minus 6b. Now, at that stage, the, co the polynomial on the left has to be the same as the polynomial on the right. So on the right, we need to have 7x plus 4. The only way for that to be true is if 4a plus b is actually 7 and negative a minus 6b is equal to 4. Now we've got a system of equations to solve for a and for b. So we can solve this however we want to solve this. I'm going to choose to multiply the second equation by 4. I'm doing that because now if I add that to the first equation, the a's will cancel out. And so if we add those, we get negative 23b equals 23. We solve for b and get b is negative 1. We now plug that into either equation. So here if I have 4a plus negative 1 equals 7, so I'm plugging into that first equation 4a plus b equals 7. And now I solve for a, I add the 1 and get 8, divide by 4, and I get a is 2. 
what all of that indicates is that we can rewrite the original integral as the integral of a over x minus 6, so 2 over x minus 6, plus b, which is negative 1, over 4x minus 1 dx. All of the work on the bottom half of the screen is to do that first step. On this problem, the rest of this uh, is fairly straightforward. So we're going to divide this into two integrals. We get 2 integral 1 over x minus 6 dx minus the integral of 1 over 4x minus 1 dx. Both of those problems would be u substitution problems, or they are u substitution problems. On the first one, du is 1 dx. So we get 2 log absolute value of x minus 6. On the second one, u would equal the entire denominator. du then is 4 dx. And so we multiply inside by 4 and outside by 1 fourth. That gets us 1 fourth log absolute value of 4x minus 1 plus c. And then this is the answer. OK, so the ones that we have done um, on this video the denominators factor into what we call linear factors. So x minus 6 and 4x minus 1, those are linear because x is to the first power. Um, on the previous problem, the x minus 4 and the x plus 2, also linear because x is to the first power. This can get more complicated than on these problems. Um, it, so we can get repeated linear factors, meaning we get the same linear factor more than once. We can also get what's called uh, irreducible quadratic factors. And so we'll talk about those in later videos. That changes up uh, the way the integrals themselves work out. It doesn't change the partial fractions part very much. One thing that you want to be careful of is that when you're doing these problems, it seems like on these that you are cross multiplying in order to get a times 4x minus 1 and b times uh, x minus 6. So it looks like this is what's happening, like those are getting multiplied together. It's important not to think of it that way. Um, when there are only two factors, so when it's just x minus 6 and 4x minus 1, that is kind of what happens. But when there are more than two, or if the power is bigger than one, then that is not exactly what happens. It's important to think it through that you're multiplying by the common denominator. Um, on the simpler examples, like the ones on this video, it, it uh, works out to be a little bit easier, but in general, that's not the case. So before moving to the next video, it's real, real important that you get comfortable with this process. So on the first partial fractions worksheet, I believe there are eight problems. You should do the first three before moving to the next video. And if you're trying to work ahead, definitely don't work problem four yet. Um, we'll talk about that actually in the third video, but on this video we've covered what you're going to talk about on problems one through three. We'll talk about more cases on the next video. Thanks for watching.